for recording. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Let's do this. Are you ready, Jonathan? I'm ready. You can hear me? I can hear you. Yay. All right, let's begin. So good afternoon, Tuesday on October 27th, in the middle of very busy earnings week. I am very excited to have a guest in that I feel like I discovered. Jonathan, can I take credit? Like you were on Twitter and I was like, oh my God, he's got such a hot take on the market. He's got some cool tools. Let's share. And we ended up talking and at, I didn't even know about your app, uh, your mobile app, which you have since launched. And it's just cool beans with its option tactic uh, strategies that I really, really endorse. So let's kind of do a little bit of that background, if you will, of what is your bio a little bit, and then um, definitely explain your presentation of how you give your market views, because that's actually what I glommed onto in the first place is I found that your take, yeah, it was a little similar to mine, but it also utilized some of the same tools and techniques, which was cool. Um, we also use the same kind of charting platform for some of our analysis, uh, TC2000. So there was a similarity there. And I was really excited to support your efforts in this FinTech product. And then you told me a little bit more about it and then you launched it. So I feel like I've known you when, you know, before you were famous. And you are, you know, gracious enough. I had this idea. Let's do an interview. I want to know how you use the product, how we could um, get my clients selfishly educated to uh, use it for trading um, based on their time frames. And then we decided to kind of open it up, make it a public thing. And um, this actually was the brainchild of the guest captain interview series, which just launches today with you. <laughs> So take it away, Jonathan. Tell us a little bit about your background and where we can find your analysis and where we can find your tool while we're waiting for big tech to report. Okay. Um, so I think it was probably back in like what April um, when we met and uh, through Twitter, I guess it would be. And um, yeah, at that time, uh, I was just getting into Twitter just to uh, kind of share some things because so many family members back in uh, COVID, this kind of interesting story, were asking me, hey, what do I think? What do I think? What do I think? And I was tired of people asking me what I thought because, you know, run a prop shop, um, history is entrepreneurship and fintech and insurtech, built a couple companies, always traded um, avidly myself for the past decade. And after last exit in 2017, um, really wanted to get into this space. And so, uh, we put our together our own prop shop, started trading, um, you know, house capital and then, you know, investor capital and really kept it kind of private and, and small and was just getting used to the whole, the whole vibe. Um, people come to me from time to time, uh, you know, 2018 really on after the VIX, you know, uh, XIV implosion and well, hey, what's going on? Because uh, me and my partner specialized, one, he specialized in options side and then I specialized in the flow side. And, you know, we were kind of seeing a trend. It'd be liquidity in, marked up, kind of grinding. And we kind of created this own little thesis we had. Uh, it's like called the equity nirvana and then a doom loop. So you saw that uh, begin to transform in the beginning of 2018 uh, with the XRB implosion where it was grind up, boom, just completely implodes, grind up on liquidity, goes to the end 18, implodes, alter 19. And we were setting up for the same type of thing again in 2020. And I was telling the people, and then, you know, you were talking about the COVID thing. I've always been a follower and a fan of yours um, because you got, you know, your, your intermarket stuff is fantastic. And you were seeing kind of the, the, the beginnings of, uh, of the decline in the flows and beginnings of the decline in advanced decline kind of structures. And you can see the people were leaving the building ahead of the, the um, February timeframe. So, you know, people were reaching out to me. I said, hey, why not uh, share, share the information on Twitter? And it kind of turns into this, you know, just this feed that um, I started writing. And you actually encouraged me to uh, create. Uh, I did. <laughs> uh, a blog, right? Um, and, you know, I, it's I, so you, insightful and it's, it's disarmingly funny at times. And it's a little bit um, irreverent. So that yeah. combination 
it's and I love the juice. I mean, this is just so good. Anyway, yes, I'm a big fan. Yeah, so you know, you heard me create a blog, so create a blog. And we were always working on the product behind the scenes. So we were creating our own app because we felt like there was a huge opportunity in fintech um, to kind of tackle this uh, uh, this whole uh, generational influx of kind of an active approach to trading and investing that had been historically very passive. And so things that we were using ourselves, we were beginning to think about uh, applying and creating a platform around others, people, uh, others to be able to use. And then it kind of create an environment where it was uh, kind of not, there's no way to make this stuff simple per se, but there is a way to apply it. So we were always working on the app in the background, but you encourage the blog. I start writing the blog. It kind of catches its own little vibe thing, people following it. And um, sure enough, and that's ball as well, right? So um, it is irreverent. It's more uh, cathartic than anything to be able to yeah. rant about some of the the things that are going on. But <laughs> effectively, we were able to translate the, the kind of doom loop and equity nirvana thesis, which is now, I think, being really echoed um, across the board. Not, I'm not saying we pioneered it or anything, but that stretch of imagination. But what we, do you say that again? I didn't catch that. Uh, the, the kind of the, the equity nirvana, kind of the, the option structure that's creating that, that nirvana structure of the Gorpia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that then, got burnt out in September, didn't it? That single stock, you know, gamma option flow got yep. burnt out. And that was that was fun while it lasted. I, you know, at the time I we were we were on that. It was just so cool. And they were like, oh my God, this is going to end and it's not going to end well for retail. And they kind of got very quiet. I wonder now if they're back foolishly shorting VIX. Yeah, I um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think it's uh, you know, Chris Cole talked about it this weekend. He mentioned it, it with the, you know, we've got the options market some somewhat overtaking the actual underlying securities market. And we've seen that too uh, for a while. And that uh, that in effect creates that that nirvana and doom loop, right? Where you've got the the actual securities dealers, the options dealers having to reposition, right, according to the way that the options flows are requiring. And that, you know, it creates that exacerbation of buying the dip, right, on the grinding upward slopes. And then it does the exact opposite on the flip side once once the, uh, the actual sell side takes over. And it just really makes these elongated or large moves that occur in the market going back to 2018. And we're kind of sitting on that and it's a liquidity driven thing that's now got so many people uh, uh, in the market uh, across the board. And then it's also an options options market dynamic that we think is pretty um, here to stay, I would say, because, you know, Robinhood's impact on that, Eagles involved on that to drive the the options pricing on uh, trading to zero, right? So yep. zero commission um, has definitely impacted that. And that's got some I would call it uh, uh, unknown unknowns, right? The, yep. you know, anytime the derivative market is bigger than the actual underlying securities market, you got problems. So, uh, you know, well, you don't have problems till you have problems and you got a lot of problems. Well, this so. is actually, um, you and I were on the same theme and, I, theme and I wrote about this for clients and it was single stock gamma unwind indeed. So I had been talking about, you know, in August, how this was responsible for the wind up and we were looking for the unwind and I had, and it was basically my my thesis. Do I have it in here? Was that we would get to a point where the market would come down with volatility, and I was really adamant that we were not going. It was going to go. Both of them were going to go down. There was no way to hedge this puppy. Um, it, VIX was not going to be a hedge. And at the at the time, Bitcoin. Now it's acting, but Bitcoin was not going to be a hedge. And neither was gold, precious metals, all of that. So it's funny how I wrote about that. But one of my tools for timing that was actually a similar indicator that you use, this um, cumulative volume index in uh, the TC2000 platform. So yeah, you and I have been kind of, even though we approach it very differently and your tools are obviously different, um, we definitely hit on it at the same time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it kind of brings us to you know where we are now. We, you know, we've launched our app, and um, we're we're pushing it out uh, across mobile, and we have a web app, and um, we built our own charting, um, plugged in all our algorithms, and we've got um, uh, it's a lot more than charts. It's got an options lab and a bunch of other stuff. But you know we can talk about that in a minute. I wanted to um, kind of 
we had talked about kind of going through the market perspective as a whole here. So as you take, you tell me where you would like to go at this point. No, no, I would definitely, um, you gave a little bit of definitely your background. And again, just a reminder that you had, um, that to the audience that you had sold a FinTech, you had sold, um, let me just put this on one, two, um, an insurance tech product. So this is really your, you're a serial entrepreneur, you're yeah. a market junkie, yeah. um, you're a great writer. So now you have a product that, you know, you've birthed this baby, you're putting it out there. Um, what's your goal? What's your end goal for this product? How do you want people to use it and, and benefit from it? Well, we think there's three types of, uh, of investors in the next generation, right? There's explorers, uh, that are just learning about the market. Um, there's investors that are, you know, long-term holders, uh, building up portfolios. And then there is a whole slew of active traders and managers. Yep. And we started to put together, the history was we put together the options lab um, uh, about 2017. We were trying to solve some problems for ourselves internally. And then um, that door that developed into why don't we build our own charts because we'd always use out uh, other charting platforms, but you know, there were some restrictions in some of the proprietary things we wanted to do. So we started sourcing the data. We were able to get the data, um, which is, you know, the data has opened up substantially in the last few years um, from the exchanges and the ability to create drive works and things like that um, is so much more uh, exponential than it was before. So we started creating, we create our own charts and we create, well, why don't we create um, kind of a, a Spotify type search or screening uh, tool across stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, um, risk profiles, et cetera. Then we can you know, make some portfolio tools and we created a feed now. So effectively what we wanted to do was to create a platform that could be um, kind of expand as the, as the space expanded to fit anyone ranging from a uh, entry level, like uh, I'm trying to learn about the market. So we put yep. a thousand uh, article knowledge base in the app, um, ranging everything from what is a derivative to what is gamma to what is an ETN, right? Um, I know there's stuff out there, but it's really helpful when you're actually inside something and you're touching it kinesthetically to be able to go look up an answer immediately, right? And um, here, I'll, I'll share. Uh, yeah, share your chart and, and do a, a, also the juice, if you will, for people to sign up and get that perspective. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I, mean, I think I really want to talk markets. I mean, obviously, we've got earnings right now that are underway. Um, we have had definitely two very, I would say, under the surface dramatic days, but the market doesn't know it yet. We had a big one yesterday, the biggest down yep. day in the month. Yep. But let's talk about market views as well as um, where folks can go and find this information of yours, both your market view, but also tools to generate more of the narrative, you know, to support and learn. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I think um, you got to give me the uh, um, host. So let's see here. So, oh, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. So I think, it, so while you're sharing the other, you cannot share a screen while the other participant is sharing. Yeah, there you go. Yes, no, maybe? Got it. Okay. Okay. So um, just real quick, the app is bigtech.io, okay? And um, everything about the app is there. I don't want to belabor that, but basically it goes through the, you know, all the different components of the product um, from the search to the, uh, portfolio components, options lab, charting, um, you name it. Um, it's an in-app purchase model, right? So it's a free app um, and there's a lot of products that are inside of the app. And then one of the things we really wanted to do was make sure that, you know, you didn't have to spend an arm and leg to get uh, the different things you wanted to get. And you could kind of build and, and package an application up as you go. So you can take live charts if you want and then options if you want and you want a Jax calculation or Max Payne, if you want different algorithms, we've got some premium channels that we're adding in where other people can add their own curated content, um, strategy algos individually, you name it. But effectively it's an in-app purchase, it's a free download. And so everybody can get access to a whole slew of information um, just in the app. There's a learn database with knowledge articles, um, kind of our own blog, there's an entire support center inside the app that does product support. 
And then all the algorithms are in the vSpace store, which is all the algorithms and all the um, individual modules, et cetera, um, with the channels, et cetera, with that uh, market indicators. You can kind of subscribe, come and go as you please. So it's, a, it's, it's not per se open source, but it's a very free flowing, build it at choose your own adventure, right? So think more like Fortnite. Uh, we have the juice uh, and the juice is the daily newsletter. And I've been working on transitioning this. Um, I'm still over here at Boswell too. Um, and this is where, you know, the original blog that we have put together, um, just kind of talking about our quantitative approach. And this is what you were referring to uh, earlier. We're really digging the volatility and so forth. So this is still there. Um, we're still over at Ball as well and, and you know, curating content and putting the blog out every day. And so, you know, really anybody can kind of take it as they will um, with the application, right? So, you know, I'm an early entry level investor um, where I don't have a lot of information. Then you've got an entire support center with investment knowledge that you're learning all kinds of things about risk and dividends and yield that you may you know, have to go Google somewhere else or something like that to some really deep options knowledge, right? So everything you can think about options um, is inherent inside the application. So you're actively working with options but you can learn about it too. So that's the application, um, you know, it, it's, it's right here um, at bigtech.io. And so, but I got that out of the way. So you want to talk about the markets? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, well, uh, and also where do you go in here? Because I see your chart from Big Tech IO in your Juice Daily you yep. know, lineup. So yep. what yep. are your, where would folks find those on their own? Yeah, so so the, the if you go to the Juice and are you talking about subscribing to the, to the actual newsletter or are you talking about... Uh, the daily news are you talking about the actual app itself the charts and so forth literally so the and in particular not just the charts but the um the indicators the breadth indicators in particular oh okay okay so like we got charts in the, in the juice and if you're talking about the application you've got uh, market indicators right so you've yeah. got uh, the actual market because you've broken the app down into areas right and so the app is basically kind of sorted out through like exploring for stocks mutual funds etfs and you can kind of do that by category um, you've got the you know tracking watch list that you can run algorithms on top of. You've got portfolios, um, live charts, options lab, and market indicators. Inside the market indicators is all of the actual things that you know are kind of referenced regularly. Um, they can use anybody can use these themselves. Um, you always see the the um, the actual uh, indicators themselves sitting up in the toolbar, right? You can turn them on, turn them off. But when they're all turned on, you can see the jacks. Visualizer, Max Payne, the Combinator, um, all of these different uh, actual internal indicators that uh, we've created over time um, are all here. And they're all part and parcel. So, uh, you know, the- What's your trend, favorite? Uh, my favorite is, uh, is the Combinator, right? Um, it's selfish because we wrote uh, a VIX formula ourselves. So, you know, you can actually write VIX on anything. It's just a math formula. And this allows you to actually track VIX on any of the ETFs, like uh, look at like XLF, for example, and you can get a full temperature check on any of these at any time, on any ETF at any time, like what's really going on with that. You can see that this is really trending pretty bearish. And so we take all the data from all the ETFs, all the stuff, we get all the stock data real time, all the ETF data real time all the um, options data real time, all mutual fund data at the end of the day. And we are able to pull and calculate all these different things uh, live. So this is actually my favorite indicator to use for like an actual sector, because this is gonna tell me where the underlying is going. So you were looking at, you know, we were looking just before we got on the call at the cumulative volume getting sucked out, right? On um, that particular indicator for TC. You know, this is my favorite here because I can tell you that as long as this tick, as long as ticks are bearish, advanced declines are bearish, trends are bearish, VIX is hot, right? In short term and medium term or short term and uh, nine day, then you know this is a this is a bearish trending environment for for XLR. This would be you know vice versa it could be totally different over in uh, QQQ. So I like this um, the most personally, um, okay. but. You've got the uh, JEX, right? Gamma exposure is another um, thing that's a big deal in the markets right now. We were talking about it earlier. Explain um, this one a little bit because obviously we're also at a precipice, right? Where it could go either way. Yeah, totally. So like you're, you know, you're sitting in a, 
Um, and, and this measures the expiration in days, just assuming all days at all time frames on, on the, the S, SPY, like, you know, you're really in a, a neutral area right here. This could flip and go back real positive, or it could, you know, really get into the negative trees, as we call it, and turn that, that loop around on the, on the actual market. Um, so JAX is a very strong um, indicator to use uh, at any given time because it will give you a good gauge of what dealers are going to have to do based on, the, well, I wouldn't say have to, nobody has to do anything, but more than likely going to do based on their Delta adjusted um, dollar exposure uh, in the market. Um, the max pain is uh, gonna tell you the time frame that you're looking at um, for an expiration, right? So whatever expiration you're looking at in the market, it measures for any um, a stock or ETF, what that actual strike is that could cause the max pain between puts and calls. Um, you know, and one of the things that you'll see in the next few weeks is because we did options data this way and pulled all the options data in to the platform and we do our own charts is you'll see us start to merge options data on charts. And I think you'll really like that. And I think a oh, lot of people- Oh, I like that. I like the sound of that. Yeah, and it's gonna, you know, you can see volume profile on a chart, um, yep. you know, to the side pretty pretty uh, simply, right? Um, we're gonna, we're able to pull all that data over and to visually represent it here. So you can see open interest, you can see executed. Um, we're working on, uh, uh, you know, cause I know you guys really work on options over at the Duke Trading, yep. right? Is that um, we're gonna actually incorporate uh, you know, unusual option activity into the charts too. So, you know, we can pick all that kind of stuff up as well since we're getting all the options data. So it was a little bit longer build. It was a, it was a harder build, um, but now that it's done, it's easy for us to port all these things over. We're getting a lot of user feedback. That was one of the things that um, we threw out there and it was just totally um, soaked up pretty quick. So awesome. that's, that's coming in the next few weeks. So we the trend Advanced decline, threat, sectors, volatility. Question from, from Jonathan, um, is the screen, sorry, from John, is the screen, Jonathan, showing available on the app or only the website right now? Um, this screen right here uh, is on the app and on the web. The, the market okay. indicators are all there. The live charts will be on the mobile phone in about 30 days, roughly, 30 to 45 days. Um, we had a lot of people, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, I've been trading almost 10, 12, 15 years, something like that now. And, you know, the phone it, it's my, it's, it's, it's moved a long way in these few years. So like, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, when we first started putting it together, we didn't know if people would want charts on a phone because it was kind of small. Right. Um, but everybody's like, I want those charts on the phone. And we're like, all right you know we'll, we'll get them on the phone so yep. the charts will be on the phone but all of these indicators every indicator is available on the phone right now okay. um so if that answers your question and the free yeah, ones go all the way to volatility so anybody can use the volatility for the main sectors um so trend advanced decline absolute breadth um and volatility metrics themselves are all available for the primary sectors and then if you want to see the detail about any particular ETF, you just got to nab the combinator, right? That's a specific, specific item. So um, that's the market indicators. We continue to expound these things um, and we'll continue to add them um, incrementally. One of the things that you will see us do going forward though, is we're providing the opportunity that I mentioned earlier to content curators to actually create stuff themselves and distribute it through our feed. Right. Um, so and then eventually be able to build on top of our our, our app itself. Um, that's where we really wanted to end up at the end of the day, um, because we don't think we know everything. Um, but there's no way for anyone to know everything. There's some seriously smart people out there that are creating content and creating um, great uh, mathematical approaches to the market and um, you know, even, even like gamma exposure is something that is not necessarily new, but it's something that's really taken hold in the last couple of years. So uh, we want to offer uh, a work space per se for people in that type of uh, thing to create content. So look for that. That's, that's, um, that's actually done now, but we'll be rolling that out soon too. So. Super. All right. So that is um, an overview of, first of all, where to find stuff from your market commentary to your supporting charts, which I also find helpful and familiar. And I love the idea of expanding out to obviously add option flow, unusual, large yep. size, especially. 
the way that I use um, unusual option activity is when I'm obviously sizing up a chart that I like yeah. asset or you know underlying stock um, I'm looking very much to see how you know the whales are positioning um, so right now talking about you know SPX and VIX seems very bullish on a blue wave into uh, the election and year end. And yet my indicators, my intermarket analysis is screaming danger. And I'm curious, what is your market take big picture? Because we're not just talking about earnings right now, which is kind of like it, fr Greek statue frozen. In other words, they're waiting for the election. They're waiting for the COVID third wave. They're waiting for a vaccine that won't come until next year, stimulus that won't come until next year. So I'm looking at my intermarket stuff um, and it's signifying, you know, danger, Will Robinson. What is your take on uh, from your indicators and just your experience trading these, you know, very, very um, eventful markets? I kind of touched on it last night a little bit and the juice, uh, we call it liquidity baby. Um, the, the market is a crying liquidity baby to me right now. Um, and right now, uh, I think we did just off of, you know, back in the napkin, that 70 to 90% of the gains since March are on the back of stimulus. Um, because Ben Malcolm was interviewed by Jim Grant on Real It in probably like uh, nine months ago, a year ago, something to that effect. And he said if they ever stimulated with fiscal and monetary, at the same time, you would get a substantive move in the market. And I kind of was like, yeah, all right, what's going to ever make them do that? Because usually it was one or the other for the last 10 years. And sure enough, um, you know, COVID was. And since March, it's just been constant road up. I think that that is the number one uh, thing that I'm watching for for right now is what's happening with this stimulus. No matter who's elected, no matter which way that goes, is the liquidity coming back in full force? Or is it going to stumble with fiscal um, and not get approved? Is the Fed going to step back in? Right now, it really seems like the flows in the market, and I really track the flows a lot, right? So, yeah. you know, what's happening underneath the surface is money and velocity coming in or is money and velocity going out? And money and velocity is going out, right? And it's been going out for a little bit now. Um, and my, my thought, especially since the peak, uh, and that you were talking about the single spot gamma um, situation, and it's been steady out and has not come back in, even though we got this little bounce recently, um, that then got kind of, you know, been faded lately. It just seems like, you know, uh, I think the China situation is very um, underestimated. I think the COVID situation is completely underestimated. Um, I think the, the banking situation is completely underestimated, um, significantly underestimated, I would say there. And then you know, I know the bond situation for like muties and corporates and junk has all been supposedly fixed. Um, I don't know that that, you know, when you look, I was looking at, uh, um, if I share my screen right now, like, um, go ahead. If I was looking at, uh, and this is, this was something that I, I looked at earlier. Um, I look at, at, at uh, the weekly charts for some of this financial stuff, like American Express, right? Um, this is like rough. Um, this is rough flows came back, but then they're, they're fading out, um, now, and they never could take this level back in the market. And, and I'm a, really a market structure level, uh, a trader, um, you know, move the goalposts, you move my positioning, you keep it within the goalposts. I'm staying inside there. And this is, this is effectively never was able to make it back over here. And it's just really struggling. Um, when you look at, uh, the same thing with banks in general. Um, banks have had decent earnings, you know, quote unquote earnings, I guess you would call it right now in this COVID environment, but, but they could not take back this level. This is a pretty, this volume node needs to be broken and taken back, died right there at the spot on the weekly perspective. So I think the US dollar is really set up to squeeze. Um, I've been hammering that, read that, I, I, I've been hammering that for a while. I think that's sitting there. Um, when I look at silver, I don't look at Bitcoin as the same trade. I think there's a lot of other uh, market dynamics going on with Bitcoin trade. Um, when you look at straight inflation. How, how do you treat Bitcoin? Right now, I'm looking at it as the rich man's hedge. I, I, uh, I, I think it's... Um, you know, I'm not I'm not educated enough in it to know the the dynamics of it. I know that um, 
Plan B. Um, the guy on Twitter um, has written extensively about it. I know a lot of people on the train about it, but I think it's a stimulus baby, right? Like um, uh, that it's it's totally uh, a product of the stimulus and the whole uh, monetary policy kind of argument. Um, I just find it hard to believe that the governments are going to give up their reserve currency status. That's just my two cents on it. But I think that could end in uh, in, in in tears um, at the end of the day when they just either uh, aggregate. It's like China announced yesterday they're going to outlaw every one of the digital currencies um, as soon as theirs clears, right? So, you know, I, I think there's definitely a need for it. Um, on the macro picture, I think that we need some other monetary solution um, at the end of the day. But yeah, I'm I'm like uh, uh, you know definitely would say it's a Momo trade. Um, that's a that's a liquidity trade. I think gold, silver, kind of the mining stocks, um, and then tech are are more of an inflation trade, right? Um, because if interest rates remain low, then everybody gets pushed out on the curve. And they have to take more risk, and then also they are going to hedge inflation outright. I think those are maybe a better proxy um, than than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is uh, quite quite easily manipulable, um, so I'm definitely not um, against Bitcoin. I'm just kind of on the fence to to the to the long term feasibility of it uh, at this point. All right, so this is now a, a week into the election, and we typically have a very big um, surge, you know, typically, this is historically, in other words, not farmer's almanac, but trading, trader's almanac, where we basically have a, a Halloween rally the last four days of October and the first three days of November into an election. That's typically, there's an 85% chance of this end of month election Halloween rally. Are you buying it? Are you selling it? Mm. I think patience is a virtue right here. I think if you're, if you're, you're out of it, <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're playing it, you need to be hedged. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I think the market dynamics, we, we, we do back testing, right. To, to, to discover efficacy and product construction. I don't know that because it happened yesterday, it's going to happen tomorrow. And especially in the market dynamics we have today, and especially with the, the liquidity driven situation that if there is liquidity, I think you could see um, instantaneous just rip of the market. I think if in, in head higher, I think if there's no liquidity, I think it won't matter about this stuff at all. I don't think we're gonna get a, I mean, we can get some earnings pops or what have you, but I, I think there's a significant fence sitting right here. You may be a nothing burger um, is what, what I'm buying. Kind of just, you know, everybody's waiting and seeing now. I don't know what, they're waiting to see it on. Um, I think the election's contested either way, but um, they're waiting, right? And and it's like VIX, VIX up, you know, 15, 20% yesterday, nothing, right? I mean, um, no no suck out and no follow through. It's, it's a I think it's doing great. I think it's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally don't disagree. <laughs> so for me, I see the um, the backwardation that I mentioned to clients on the 20th of October um, that has basically happened. In other words, we, we are now um, in backwardation, but it still doesn't show extreme fear. So the VIX itself, that chart that I had mentioned had been coiling, isn't just VIX, it, it's Euro currency um, volatility, it's gold volatility, yeah. um, bonds, VIX, VXN, um, the whole thing, the whole complex is coiling. So we had a breakout, um, obviously Monday, and that breakout in VIX, can you see my chart? Yep. Okay, that, that broke above the 200 day, this is a intraday, uh, on an hourly and then a day and then a weekly. Um, now they're coming in and they're buying lots and lots of puts, some whoever they is. But my point is it's actually acting extremely productive for a continuation. Um, we'll see this week, obviously, with volatility of NASDAQ, which came down into tonight's you know print. But if I you know technically chart um, volatility of NASDAQ, it, it's it's in a coil, it, coil it's got to move it, there's no more time <laughs> so um yes 
it can go either way. We can have a market melt up, but I would be very, very surprised um, for that to happen, honestly. So the bet that I have is that we have definitely some volatility come in. Last time we had a contested election, we were, you know, um, Bush Gore, we were down 5%. And then when we had the, um, the decision, the Electoral College, I think it was December 12th, went, went down another 7%. This is history only rhymes. My point is this contested election and extremely elevated VIX um, throughout basically January now. It was less expensive, but now it's risen. But I still think they are selling much more the VIX than they are buying. So Bitcoin as a hedge potentially playing out uh, precious metals or not gold, silver. It's just not not until fiscal gets, you know, resolved. So Great. how uh, other than shorting outright shorting um, and playing the cues, how are you hedging? I would say right now, I, I would say. We're, we're long volatility, right? Like um, we're, we're long ball. We're long US dollar. I've been sitting there on that. That trade's been going nowhere for a little while, but, um, yeah, but it is a good idea if you are bearish the market because bank lending is tightening. That's just very, very clear. And that typically shows itself in volatility, maybe not right away, but I can show you. I just did this yesterday, in fact, where, okay, by the way, this is the, uh, the backwardation chart. And by that, I mean, um, when VIX is above the three month VXV. So when that breaks basically the zero mark, it's backwardation. Now we need a lot more energy to get fear into this market, but this is another coil. This is the, you know, the VXV is coiling. So there's like all over the place. But in, the, in regards to um, big picture, sorry, you can't see this. I unfortunately didn't capture the, the, the dates, but this is, 06, 07, 08, right? So this is actually historically VIX is down here around 17. Um, we're pushing 28. I just, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that VIX is done going up at all. So I think we're just getting warmed up. Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. Until the, until the debt situation is resolved that has you know, come into play since COVID, you're just going to get fits and false starts. I mean, you know, tech has rebounded substantively and gotten way, you know, way higher, but banks, right? No, yep. um, you know, uh, bonds are all totally artificial uh, support at the moment. And you look at, you know, even like commercial real estate is totally a, um, a disaster. These are, these are substantive parts of the economy. And they they got to shake out, you know, uh, unless there's just massive, massive instantaneous stimulus coming. I, and I just stick to that. I, I'm kind of um, sitting on that that plague book right now. The, it's long dollar, long ball. Um, you know, obviously you're sitting there with stops in case they pull out the bazookas. But I think that this has to shake out first before we even see the, the what does the next two years in the stimulus look like? And it hasn't shook out. So I think you're, you're just in a giant stalemate. And, you know, you just got to kind of sit with positions that make sense and positions that you can hold and, um, you know, not get chopped out. They, you know, you still get some chopped out right now, but I think you're all over with the fix. It's, it's definitely broken up. It's sitting there. And, you know, I think, I don't, I don't know that it shakes out the way everybody what everybody expects, right? I think it's going to be, there's a lot more unknown unknowns than there are known unknowns, right, out there at the moment. So, so how would you structure an earnings play since we have a bunch of them coming up on Thursday? All right, so I pulled a bunch of, uh, I pulled a bunch of stuff from the app. Um, let me pull this stuff up. Because they're still, you know, hot fire flames bullish. Absolutely. Right. So you've got a couple of different things. So we did a little bit of research um, this morning and set up some some different scenarios. And I really want to show you guys how to use the application um, in the process when you're looking at options. Right. Um, so, you know, you can take a look. at. so right now, when you look at uh, Apple, you know, as of this morning, right, or I would say midday, I'm not sure if these are still like exact stats. But, you know, uh, uh, it looks like a 4% up move or a 6% down move. 
And then, you know, you've got some implied volatility implications of that. So the way that we've structured the application, you know, you're picking your direction. Do you want to show yours? Uh, yeah, is it not sharing? Nope. I don't believe so. Hold on. Since I'm not. Oh, it is. My mistake. I'm looking okay, at no yeah. worries, no worries. It's there. Thank you, John. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So you've got, you know, the direction, the percentage move that you think is going to take hold, the date that you think that this will occur by, and then, you know, pick your strategies. And with the app, there's 40 plus strategies that you can utilize in there. You know, you can pick them all or you can pick, you know, just the up strategies or just the down strategies or the chop strategies. Right. Then you can pick whether you're going to determine, you know, what IV is going to do. Because this is really important because I'll show you Amazon here in a second. Amazon's showing that if it goes up, it could be a pretty substantive suck out in IV. And that would have a major negative implication to, you know, just a straight long call play, for example. So you pick the IV impact that you think is going to take place. And there's a lot of ways to discover that. And then you look at, uh, you know, whether you want to use optimizing options or traditional options. And the difference between the two is optimizing options, the app is going to look for the most optimal options out on the chain. So it's not going to pick the traditional date for October 30th. If you were looking for October 30th, you would just pick traditional and it would line those dates up with the closest date that you chosen. So that's going to line up both. And anytime you have two different um, uh, option components, right? And spreads, ratio spreads, et cetera, that may it may have um, different legs, then those dates are going to line up in that in that structure. If you use optimize, those dates may be different. It's going to pick the most optimal ones. So we're just picking optimize right here, and this is Apple, for example. And you know you've got a bunch of different potential scenarios that you could take a look at, and these will all adjust automatically because I know we're you know we don't have all day, so I've prepared a, a few of these things for each one. You can see that you know when you plug in these these statistics uh, uh, about the scenario, you got a bunch of different things that can happen. So this is a short ratio call spread. Um, the app's going to tell you all about that. It'll tell you what the outlook is, the max loss, the max gain, um, the impact of volatility, time decay, profit loss, assignment risk, and break even. So you kind of learn as you go, and then you have an interactive um, kind of uh, game loss perspective now, based on. You know, it gives you a little bit more scenario planning when you're in here after you set your initial thought about where it could go. So, okay, I thought it was going to do this. What if it goes down and what if it goes up? What's the impact to the move, right? Like it goes down 17% up. It'll automatically adjust during real time. So this is, you know, what I would say going into um, this week for each one of these particular um, major fang stocks, these are, these are big tech. I think that when I look at the scenarios on them all, um, each one, you know, I've kind of run each one of them. The, the major thing that, that if you use the app to look for is going to be the implied vol. So if you look at, uh, you know, we were, we were seeing some crazy implied vol uh, suck out on Amazon. It's just really kind of got a high elevated per, um, perspective at the moment that, you know, even if you're right directionally, you're going to be, you're going to be totally blown out on your position. So, you know, make sure that when you do these scenarios, right, you're going to be able to adjust your IV because that directly impacts what's going to happen. Now, that it, Amazon was the only one we saw that had that kind of um, major suck out potential. You know, Facebook uh, had a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of uh, drop, but it's not mispriced right now. It seems to be pretty, pretty normalized pricing. So. I would suggest, you know, spreads. Like uh, I really suggest using spreads here because they're going to limit your your risk. And and then also I would not necessarily hold on to this stuff very long. That's my thought on playing these earnings, right? You know, I'm using spreads, see if they hit, and then you know if, you, if they don't hit, you're you're covered with some with some of your um, opposite side. And then also you know you're probably not going to want to hold it very long into next week because yeah, the, these these moves should play out pretty quickly. If they're going to play out because the levels that i've seen in the market right now and i'll just come over here to the banks while we're talking about them yeah i was going to say do you use really short duration seven day 14 day or do you go out 45 60 days what's your we, we go out we go out for theta right so um we don't like to get uh caught on the wrong side now if you're if you're going short duration um you'll see in here that uh looking at a call 
right? It's going out to January, right? So this is Facebook. It's looking out not too far, 60 days, but this is picking up um, that one as the most optimal based on some of the logic that we employ. Yeah, you picked up traditional, that's on an optimizing option. If you picked up traditional, it's gonna pick you up the same type of logic, but on, on, a, on a date for this Friday, you know? So, you know, I would, I always take the longer term play with options. I, I treat, know, so does Richard, my risk manager. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, 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 uh, you can do very well. Um, and he's right. That's what really, really, really bothers me. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we, we suggest that. We always kind of default to that. That's what uh, most of our education Good. Um, no, that's about good. options uh, dictates is that make sure that you're thinking about data because but you also have a lot of um, calendar spreads in here, but there's no yep. mention. I know it's hard, but uh, you know the margin aspect. So where do you educate on margin? Because that's a really big deal. Another thing, you know, like I did a finance call spread in Gilead. Yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. And Richard's like nobody can follow that. You can't do those. <laughs> yeah. So so we have uh, in in the portfolio piece um, we have built in. So like any type of. Uh, um, spread the, most of the time, like these are not too impactful when you're running one like a bull call spread, right? But when you are running stuff where you're actually long the underline, right, or you're short the underline, right, you've got uh, a margin impact. And okay. in our in our mar in our portfolio piece of like you went to trade this, um, like kind of paper trade it, what have you? There's a whole margin um, app you turn on. If you turn this on, then it's gonna model out what that's going to look like in a portfolio scenario. So they're kind of tied together because we're actually tying this in where you'll be able to import your portfolio in here um, and kind of run right directly off of that. That's coming in the next couple of months. So that's how we've kind of addressed it. On a, okay, say that on a you're going to be able to import the portfolio and do margining. Yeah, you'll be able to import the portfolio um, using, you know, just the uh, is, you know, normal API and um, there's tons of stuff out there like that. And then you'll be able to see in the, the actual whole app is built like um, a trade trade system, right? So we have trade tickets. Um, each one of these is constructed. So if you re-engineered your portfolio right now and then turn margin on, it would actually function like your portfolio um, in a couple, you know, I'd say probably a month or two. At the latest, then you'll be okay. import. You can import this. Just turn margin on, and it would give you the impacts to that right here. So you know, right now you can test it, but in the long run, you'd be able to actually kind of treat it like it's real time to an extent. Yeah, um, that's huge. I think that's a really big deterrent from taking on too much risk. At the same time, absolutely. Yeah, not, absolutely. not knowing about it, ignorance is not bliss. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's very helpful different. Um, you know, personality types, if you will, because um, everyone has a different investment style as far as stocks, options, whether they want, you know, longer duration or, you know, cowboys and cowgirls once in a while. Um, but mostly I like the variability. Is it really, I mean, of offering different examples and then folks can kind of kind of go in there and see um, what your AI is recommending. But one thing that I had mentioned when I was first looking at this uh, you know, this kind of beta testing a, a little while ago was open interest versus volume. Like for example, you know, Hog, Harley Davidson today um, announced and they were up 25%, but there was nothing in really, there were a few thousand contracts total in the entire option market for Hog before this morning. And then this morning it, you know, was huge uh, beat and folks were chasing it from the open and it ran from 20, you know, 30, uh, 32 to 37. So granted from an option standpoint, we can chase, but to play that it was a little illiquid before earnings where in your back testing AI and presentation of different option tactics, do you address liquidity? Because as you know, you know, it might be easy to enter, but it may not be easy to exit. So where do we see that? In, in in your um your studies here did i, lose? I just got <laughs> i got a text that i didn't know if it was an emergency <laughs> all right so what do we do what do we do with with um volume for the day and and liquidity yeah so there's about a i want to say a uh, hundred different uh, schematic points of measure right and open interest and volume is one of the factors of the of the hundreds per se okay and so, 
you're going to see that trigger probably on the, the back end. And one of the things that we've discussed is the actually opening up, um, we're doing this two ways and creating an advanced version and then also creating a more systematic version that's a little bit uh, kind of less less uh, choices, right? Um, more static choices on the front end. So you and I talked about that, I think the first day we were looking at it. Yeah. So we're talking about kind of a, a very kind of interactive approach to selecting where it was uh, determined for you, right? More of a standardization. And then also in the uh, on the back end where you can potentially open more filters because of those, let's say hundred type um, settings or, or filter structure that you're sorting through, right? With the, with the actual calculations. If you had some control with those, you could adjust, actually adjust that, right? So you could say, I want a little bit less liquidity, or I want a little bit more liquidity. Those are all things that are measurements. Those are tweaks on the back end. So we filter out for more liquidity than less because you gotta be able to get out of it. But if you wanted to maybe tweak that yourself, you can have the potential to do so. So we're when we roll this out, we're actually doing something in the next 30 days. It's uh, interesting to bring that up where those two things will be will be brought forward. So you'll have a more advanced okay. area where you can mess with those types of things and a lighter area where you're not, actually not even worried about the decisions you're making right here. You just pick your direction and then you kind of go. Well, right. I hate to go off trail, but these are things that are interesting to me. So I have to ask since I got you live. Um, also like GE, for example, right now, I know we're, we're not talking big tech right now, but that has been um, left for dead in many regards, but it's, it's looking extremely promising of late, not just as a value play because of the yield spike, but by the option flow, I don't know if you've noticed, but the January um, calls that are getting bought or sold, not quite sure, but it's in the literally millions. So what the heck is going on? And your particular software, since I know you're doing this on VIX and you know SPX, it, it is swamping the option flow um, for GE. So when a stock like that is coming into earnings in a few days, it has unprecedented option flow, predominantly bullish, what's your back testing AI, you know, going to do? Like, wh where is it um, with an earnings play? How would you play this? You well, I think that there's two, there's two different things there. There's um, some structure based, but if you're, if you're incorporating like large options activity as a measurement of um, uh, a sentiment tracker, so to speak, Right, like that's a that's an actual sentiment gauge mm -hmm. versus you know having enough liquidity to get out of a position. Oh no, that's why I'm taking the other side. Yeah, yeah. very illiquid, and then this today it just exploded because everyone's like, wow, and now GE is ridiculously liquid, so much so that something's up. <laughs> so. Yeah, totally. You know, you know, it's it's uh, that's a that's a, a kind of a, a double edged sword, right? Because if you don't know which way those options are trending whether they're bullish or bearish right yes uh the positioning that you can get on the wrong side of that so that's but, what i'm going for so yeah. you're going to be incorporating i'm helping you I'm like developing yeah, like, no no look 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 we're oh, we're you help me so we, it, we have it yeah yeah, yeah we've got the data i yeah, want to know i want to know if they're buying or selling like i i can individual lots i can see but i mean collectively right um it would be very helpful to know because I'm I'm studying it all all morning in my live trading room, right? I can see. No, what you know, and that's exactly the data that's going to be represented. Uh, represented, I can speak English. Represented visually as well, right? Yeah. So you drop it right into the charts and see massive activity at this marker, this area, this yeah. level, and you can begin to see you know market levels of volume take shape with market levels of options, right? And yeah. are those um, in alignment are those, you know, not in alignment that could be, you know, very unique and, and uh, interesting outcome as well. Right. So you yeah. could have. I want to know, I want to know yeah. what that indicates in your, um, you know, in your software collectively, if you will. Um, yes, they could be buying the stock and just selling the calls in anticipation of earnings. It could be directional. Um, it could be that single stock gamma deal, right? That has captured the attention. The whales are coming in. It would be very, uh, if you're going to be doing unusual option activity, those kinds of um, filters and analysis, uh, data and analysis would be very helpful. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is this right now is a you know kind of tell me what you want to do, and I'm going to go create all the different ways you can play that right and incorporate you know some massive data points to do that. Uh, then when you start aggregating in the other the other areas of it, it gets even more kind of interesting as, as things shake out, right? And when it, when we built this, that's why we wanted to have chart data build our own charts. A lot of people just pull in charts, right? Um, they don't actually write actual uh, candles, right? Or the actual ticks, right? They're actually just importing a chart from somewhere or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, these are all built so that we can incorporate that tick data also in conjunction with the options data and start marrying them. So I don't I don't think uh, you were, uh, you've been pretty spot on so far. So we'll just keep going with the <laughs> my suggestions with I your have. suggestions right you're 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 knee deep in it every day so you know you're, so power you because you're coming at it from i don't want to say quant because you're also you 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 you're interdisciplinary like me i love to study the macro right i'm, I'm looking at lending tightening it's going to cause volatility volatility will reprice everything etc you you like to look at the quant the option flow so do i because we're looking for some really good momentum. Um, volatility creates momentum oftentimes to the downside, but still we want that um, you know, sentiment like you and I have talked about, but we come at it from a little bit different perspective, meaning you have your growth indicators, I have mine. I use intermarket manually. I don't have anything that's generated um, like your indicators. But I love your stuff because then I can see you know, graphically how it might compare to my intermarket stuff. So I'm very heavy on the, um, you know, macro, I should say in fundamentals as a backdrop, very heavy in the intermarket and the technical analysis with a, with a side of quant and sentiment. Where would you put your focus of those six, you know, categories? Where would you say that the top two are your focus? Um, I would say me personally, it's, it's the, it's the flow side is number one. That's that's absolutely number one. I think that's that on the flow side. Yeah, it's it's coming. It's it all boils down to a uh, function like nature to an extent. It's like gravity. You can't. It, nothing's going anywhere without velocity, right? And if you don't have velocity, you're going. You you don't have anything. So it's patterns. The, uh, yeah, patterns absolutely. Story. And I want to be able to fit a narrative to the pattern. So. Yeah, that and then market structure for me is number two. So flows and then levels, right? And I've hammered that substantively. I don't like correlations. I don't like um, like uh, chart patterns and certain things. You know that people. You know, I like all of it. You can you can see certain things. It, it, it's like looking at clouds, right? What do you see with that cloud? Right? No, no, no. Not when you see the same thing over and it's highly repeatable. Like for example, I saw the hog pattern. And I before the earnings, and I said this looks really bullish, and so does GT, which has nothing to do with with Harley. And I said it'll be very curious if Harley just exploded. Now we've got good um, uh, Goodyear tire coming out in a few days. I will be again impressed if it follows the same pattern. So I look at patterns because they're repeating. Yeah, so, yeah. but but I look at everything. You know that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, totally, no, totally. Your 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 general your generalist uh, capabilities are are. Um, I'm a solid undefeated. generalist. This is true. I am a solid generalist and you are now launching a tool. And I, that's why I was excited that it's, it's live. I got to see it, use it. Um, I've read your, you know, disarming and um, very spot on um, juicy analysis. I think it's awesome that you are um, just also educating the masses how to take this into their own and do their own self-study absolutely um, they still need mentors i you know this is what i do i'm live trading room and trade alerts and my written analysis is, highly recommended is yes. to support those who might need either that um or they're just wanting my flavor you know my particular approach so you are running your own book and you have this new product, which is um, very exciting. And I know it's going to be more and more development. Thank you for letting me give that feedback, especially on the unusual option activity, because I will use that. My clients will yeah, use absolutely. not just yeah. the tactics that you're recommending, um, which I also like. You get to go in there and kind of fit 
your everyone is is specific about their investment style, their duration um, of you know time that they want to be in front of the the trade, let alone the computer. So right. you do give some flexibility in that. Definitely incorporate the margin. I think that matters. Um, the option flow that matters. IV is tough. We're having a, we don't know what's going to happen on the IV. So this is one thing we've also talked about how to kind of um, uh, create scenarios. Yeah, streamline it for sure. Yep. Yeah, but those three things. That's my feedback. <laughs> ah, it's great. This is great. I appreciate you having me on this and putting this together and um, you know we everything. Yeah, we did a good job. We put it together. James did the, the flyers. He built the back end. We, you know, put it on the email list. We're like, okay, we're going to just start. And we haven't practiced. We didn't do a mic check. <laughs> you know, kind of Got on a few minutes ago. <laughs> and basically, um, the idea is this will sit on, hopefully, I can see my page here, uh, brand new, right? Guest captain interview page. And we're going to get um, Jonathan back here next Tuesday, which Hopefully we'll do a, a, we'll see if we can do like a half hour one, just because it's election night and people are going to be on sure, fascinated, and then it'll stop. There'd be like no breathing. And then we won't probably find out until the next day. Like last time it was midnight, but if we can still do this. Um, and then when this is done, it'll go here and also on my YouTube channel. And I think this will be educational. Let's next time I've got a list of five stocks. Now I know we've got big okay. tech right now. And it's all combining with, you know, COVID increases and stimulus delays and election risk, um, not to mention it's very overvalued, in my opinion, um, markets with a volatility component that cannot be ignored because it's coiling across many asset classes, not just NASDAQ, but it's the big weighting in NASDAQ. So we got to really pay respect to that. And right now they might just, I think, not go up or down the big ones. They're just going to be like, you know, vol crush events for uh, premium sellers. Absolutely agree. And then we get into election time and then the fireworks start because my volatility stuff is intonating a big move. And I don't have a position politically about what happens. All I'm trying to do is match a narrative to my pattern and my analysis intermarket wise and something big is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's Some, something's out there. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's, you know, the, it, it's the, the China situation has been far. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, it's been far too quiet. And, you know, they're, they're continuing to test every particular area they can, like from Taiwan to rhetoric to corporate to the whole thing with TikTok. I mean, that, I, I think that, that that to me is more substantive potentially than the election. Oh, yeah. And also December 1st, I have to mention, not only is um, China um, enacting these sanctions that they've already threatened, they go into effect on December 1st, but we also have the risk of a government shutdown, debt ceiling drama because it was postponed remember from october 11th that's still a risk event even if nobody's talking about it because you have no idea how pissed this guy might be if he loses or how retaliatory he is just just in spite remember 2018 when trump shut down the government it was the longest running government shutdown in history so we already have covid I, you know, it might not happen. Most people say it won't happen. Guess what? My job, I'm mom. <laughs> I see my kids um, is, is to what is to measure risk. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to discount that. I, I, I will use that as an input that I think is a little bit under the radar right now. It uh, might come percolating up and it would time with everything else. Taiwan, China, US, capital markets war. There's a lot bubblings and euro my god we haven't even talked about currencies which right now the yen looks like it's ready to go into escape velocity mode yeah. we got yeah. i know we're on a lot of the same page when it comes to these asset classes and i know we kind of talked about this but i wanted to showcase your product so that people could start using it and yeah, push sure. around in it yeah i appreciate it a lot yeah, yeah. but yeah. let's let's do this again we'll market this a little bit more and get some um hot trades for next tuesday we'll do a market talk and then we'll actually um i've got five in particular they're high growth right. names and i'm excited about these because they've been um 
big big winners so we'll pull we'll pull um auction structures we'll pull market structures we'll pull ball for all these that you're looking at and we'll talk through the way we look at them and what we're looking at from all the different levels of from flows all the way through all the the actual uh, options activity to kind of a projected um uh, scoring system on how they're doing underneath the surface fundamentally so we can compare all those different things if Yay. you give them ahead of time and then we'll you know bring it back to everybody and i won't uh, be shamelessly self-promoting the entire time you're hardly you you and you deserve to get this out there so people can start um using it and i really appreciate this jonathan i wish you a great Oh, are we at Friday yet? No, it's only Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday. Yeah, we got a, a lot great, of week left. <laughs> a great, a, a great earnings week. All okay. right. Yeah. You too. You too. Take Thanks. care. Stay safe. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.